I know this is the best time of year for getting gifts, but I would say without a doubt that I got my gift a little earlier than usual. At a time when I was really feeling down in the dumps and I just felt all alone, I had a dream. I had a dream that I was getting married. And I got married to someone who I really felt a kinship with. Someone who I felt I truly loved. It was no one I knew in real life. I could just feel my heart glowing when I met this particular person. And I couldn't wait to marry them. We had our wedding. It was beautiful. The people I did know in my life were all there to witness our marriage. And it was such a wonderful sight. And so, feeling so much more happier about myself, I decided to bring this woman that I married in my dream into real life, so to speak, by making her a character in this game. A new warrior of light to share with all of you here today. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce you to literally the woman of my dreams, Tanya. And whoever this person is. <laughs> yeah, that was weirdly timed. But yes, it is something that when it happened, I came to the realization that I did not want to lose my memory of this woman. And I wanted to bring her into my life for good. So my on it's my honor once again to give you a wonderful gift for the Starlight Celebration by introducing you to literally the woman of my dreams. And today, we'll celebrate the Starlight Celebration, this game's version of Christmas, together. So, with that in mind, greetings people of the world! Matthew back with you here at Novara Autism for this special bonus edition of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. But thankfully, there's no need for storms or blood, because of course, it's the right time to be celebrating. And this year, we're going to be celebrating in a way that I really hoped we would do someday in this game, and that day has finally come. So, we're here at Miketo's Amphitheater in Gridania to get started with this year's festivities. So, let's make our way to the face of the Starlight Celebration, Am Garanji, and take on her level 15 challenge entitled, Not So Silent Nights. Am Garanji has need of a little helper, and who is more helpful than you? Ah, oh, tis always a joy to welcome a new face. I'm a Starlight Celebrant, and you must be an adventurer in search of festive cheer, correct? We have lots of surprises in store, especially for the little ones. The Starlight Celebration wouldn't be complete without the beaming smiles of all those darling children. One of said surprises will involve a tradition from the frozen clouds of Vishgard. A little snow makes the world glisten and sparkle, but too much can be ever so dangerous, as the Vishgardians know all too well. That is why the adults offer a song to the Saint of Nemea, so that he may keep the blizzards at bay. While the weather here in Gridania is nowhere near as inclement as that, a festive song like that will make the proceedings even more memorable. And when the singing is over, we'll give each child in the audience a present. Luckily, several local businesses have agreed to fund all this merrymaking. Are you familiar with my sensor of Black Rabbit Traders by any chance? She has been particularly eager to lend us a hand. From the decorations to the costumes, there's scarcely an aspect of the celebrations in which she hasn't been involved. In fact, she has even agreed to arrange the musicians who will be singing here at Miketo's Amphitheater. The only trouble is, I haven't seen her for a while and I worry that she may have encountered complications. Now I'm sure there's nothing to worry about, but I would be ever so grateful if you could speak with her. Perhaps politely remind her that the success of the Starlight Celebration hangs in the balance? I'm dreadfully sorry to impose upon you like this, but we are up to a bubbles in tasks that simply cannot wait. Could you do me this one teensy favor? Yeah, I believe I can there, on. Oh, that's terrific. She's probably at her stall near the Aetherite Plaza. And so that is where we will go. Also, I, sh I noticed I am currently just with Tanya in the in a Christmas outfit, but I also realized that I'm on Conjurer right now, and it's at level 1, so I need to fix that. 
And I need to fix that and put a lance in her hand. And it will do, just so long as she actually is equipped with one. There we go. So yeah, for those of you who have never been to Black Rabbit Traders, it's actually not that far from the Aetherite, as On said. So, yes, this is my sensor, the lady who runs the place. Come to feast your eyes on my wares, have you? Or is there something else you would like to discuss? It's the latter, actually. Well, it was never my intention to keep on Garagey waiting. I will happily explain everything as soon as we take this conversation somewhere a little more... private? Uh, might I suggest the secluded area by the Leatherworkers Guild? You know, like, what are you getting out there, my sensor, and what's going on? Well, why don't we go to the level Leather Workers Guild and find out? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of Miko female Mikote running around this year. Is it the player's intention to um, fill the world of Eorzea with adorability? Or sexiness, or one of the two, or possibly both? Not really sure, but certainly it seems to be going on like that. And so, sometime later... And who have you brought with you? Thank you for agreeing to meet me here. I'm on good terms with Good Master Gabe, and she lets me use this space for... Well, that's a story for another time. Or perhaps never. Naturally, a quiet spot like this is ideal for avoiding unwanted attention, while the guard, who has been asked to turn a blind eye, is an effective deterrent to any would-be eavesdroppers. Doesn't sound very wholesome there, my center. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the homunculi, the greatest musical sensation the Remus have ever known. Even more than the songbirds? While I am not one to boast, I should be po I should point out that I play no small part in bringing them and my organization, Black Rabbit Traders, together in a mutually beneficial partnership. We cover their expenses while they promote our fine range of fashionable attire as they enchant halls of these self-hearted onlookers. Although I should warn you, any rumors of them searing a string of bastards across Eorzea are entirely unfounded. Well, mostly unfounded. <laughs> Yeah. Hello there, gentlemen. Yeah, all Alizen, no less. Of course, it won't do to have this conversation interrupted by leeches of screen followers, hence our current venue. As for their role in the Starlight Celebration, I jumped in at the chance to have them take center stage. And Myra's will flock from Mons around for the chance to see the homunculi and their new, specially prepared material. I can picture it now, the dulcet tones of my beautiful bards filling the ears of festival goers young and old with black rabbit traders making gill hand over fist from all the garments we sell. <laughs> yeah, I think she originally came from Uldar. And what's more, the presence of such renowned artists will raise the profile of the celebration, meaning that Amgarangi and her starlight celebrants will have even more reason to be cheerful. All that remains is for the homunculi to fulfill their part of the bargain and put together a few songs for the concert itself. Therein lies the problem. Why is that? Yeah, maybe we should not only have them introduce themselves, but also explain what's going on. With this and the other performance, we will mesmerize the crowds with a few favorites from our repertoire, such as Fair Lady Returns My Breaches or Hey Nonny Nonny Made in Most Bonnie, Fearing that such material may not be appropriate, we thought it best to work on some new pieces. <laughs> yeah, these guys are like a boy band. Yeah, maybe they are this version, this game's version of One Direction or something? But this occasion calls for traditional Ishgardi music, whereas we weave our entrancing melodies in the classic Redonian style. To better fulfill the needs of the Starlight Celebration, we sought the aid of an Ishgardian composer. Upon taking a seat of the manuscripts, however, we found that they were written for a mixed choir. Four singers, two male and two female. It does not take a musical officiant order to appreciate that the homunculi are equipped for such a performance. To make matters worse, there simply isn't time to halve the pieces we've written. We are well and truly out of our element, like proverbial babes in the wood. Whatever will we do? Yeah. All this moping is getting us nowhere. Are you professionals or not? 
What we need are solutions, and fast. Uh, first of all, let us select our vocalists. Luckily, the composer has provided instructions on the kind of voices required to carry the melody. Though I must admit I can make neither head nor tail of these notes. One of the female voices must be as uplifting as birdsong on a crisp winter's morning, and the other ephemeral as a zephyr across a sun dappled stream. For the males, reminiscent of a mighty oak's outstretched boughs, and deep and cavernous as the bowels of the earth. We have to start a search somewhere, I suppose. Tonya, perhaps you can help. Can you think of anyone who possesses a voice as uplifting as birdsong on a crisp winter's morning? And here's where I really thought that we would hear about um, the um, the songbirds getting involved in this, but apparently they don't want the songbirds involved in this at all. They want to leave them for the spring for Little Ladies Day. But yeah, they're even suggesting a chocobo. But yeah, you even get Am, um, as well as Fufucha, the Guildmaster of the Botanist Guild. But we're gonna go with Am. Um. Why hadn't I thought of that? If the cheerful manner in which she speaks is any indication, her singing voice may be exactly what we're looking for. Being a Starlight Celebrant, she can hardly refuse. I dare say you found the perfect candidate. With that settled, we should move on to our second female vocalist. Can you think of anyone with a voice as ephemeral as a zephyr across a sun dappled stream? Yeah, we even have the opportunity to suggest my Santa, or we can even suggest the Elder Seeds here, but I think she's a little busy right now. So, yeah, as, mu as busy as my Santa may be, the Elder Seeds here is, of course, the head of state. So, yeah, we choose you, my Santa. <laughs> yeah, the shock of look on her face. Me? You must be joking! You're serious, aren't you? Hmm, I am somewhat partial to humming the odd tune while taking a long soak in the bath. I should be able to get through it without making too big of a fool of myself, and it's for a good cause. My sense of my darling, it would be an honor to join my voice with yours in musical matrimony. Yeah, but not like that, right? Let's not get carried away. For all you know, I could be a dreadful singer. Fear not, my lady. For which we are on hand to provide all the tutelage you might require. Though the question remains, which two lucky fellows will be accompanying you? Reminiscent of a mighty oak's outstretched boughs. I would say that description fits Augustinelle's sawing vocals. I couldn't agree more. Finding someone whose voice is deep and cavernous as the bowels of the earth may prove a little more challenging, The homunculized music rarely ventures into the lower notes. Yeah, gotta put our minds together on this one. At the risk of volunteering myself for that role too, mayhap we should put that matter to one side for now. Yeah, and we're thinking about it in the meantime. Tanya, might I be able to ask a favor of you? Uh, two favors, actually. Yeah, go ahead. Keen as always, and I haven't even told you what the favors are yet. I need you to collect a conductor's baton from Beaton of the Carpenters Guild, as well as an order of choir surpluses from Redolent Rose over at the Weavers Guild in Oldar. After paying a visit to these master artisans, head straight to Angarangi in Miketo Sampa Theatre. She will be expecting you. In the meantime, it seems prudent for us to rehearse away from prying ears. No, make haste, Tonya. And so away go the Hemunculi, as well as my Santa, and so are we. So yeah, first part, not so hard for us, because we can make a quick run to the Carpenter's Guild, because that's conveniently right near the Aetheroid Plaza. The Weaver's Guild, though, that's another story, because... Um, I have not gotten Tanya to the point in story where I could send her there yet. So after we get the baton, I will go ahead and transition over once we've obtained it from Timbermaster, the baton from Timbermaster Beaten, and then I will join you in Ulda when I have gotten Tanya to pay a visit to the Weaver's Guild. Which means we'll get a, to visit once again Big old Redolent Rose. 
Hey there, Timbermaster. Also, I, before I came up to do this earlier today, testing in my test run, I never noticed this statue before. I, I, it's supposed to look like a bird, I guess? But yeah, I never noticed this before. Like, I don't know if this is a new introduction or if it's something that's always been here. Anyway, let's go ahead and speak with the Timbermaster. How must I help you? Well, we've come to get something from you. Oh yes, I have the conductor's baton right here. Since the guild seldom receives orders for such items, I thought it best to deal with this one personally. The maple gives it a certain degree of flexibility, while the cork grip allows it to be held between thumb and index finger without fear of dropping it. Thank you very much. I'm confident that my center will appreciate the quality of the craftsmanship. While my services do not come cheap, she is sure to feel that her money was well spent. And spent she did. In all honesty, a simple twig would probably suffice, but nothing is too good for her hyunkali. I must admit I do not see the appeal in those preening pretty boys. The sigh of a saw on wood and the tap of a hammer on chisel are all the music I need. Alright, and so now that we've gotten the, um, the baton, we're gonna go ahead and take the warp over to Ulda, so I will join you guys over there in just a moment. Alright, we're on the scene here in Old Dawn. We've made it to the Weaver's Guild, so let's speak with the big man himself, Redolent Rose. Oh, what's this? A customer? Or perhaps some lackey sent on an errand? It's the latter, actually, there, Redolent. Look, why are surpluses? Not the most challenging request the Guild has received, but a welcome change from all the plebeians asking us to add arse flaps to their culottes. For whatever that means. Another pleasant surprise was the amount my sensor was willing to pay for them. So generous was she that I thought it only fair to include a few more. Knowing her, she'll find a way to pitch them to the festival, go for festival goers. Blech. So any surplus surpluses could be sold on a profit. Thank you. This could even mark the beginning of a very lucrative venture for Black Rabbit Traders and the Weaver's Guild. Our mutual acquaintance is undoubtedly counting the gill as we speak, so I suggest you deliver these garments to her post-haste. Best of luck with the Starlight Celebration. Alright, now the journey goes back over to Gudania, so I'll join you once again over there in a moment. Also, because I didn't point this out earlier because we were a bit preoccupied, this young lady over here, who has been AFK, has been dancing up a storm while dressed up t to some extent with the... Two I think this was the 2015 Take on the Reindeer outfit, but she also switched up by taking the um, one of the swimsuits from the Moonfire Fair, dyed that brown, and decided to make that her look. Yeah, I thought definitely something certainly different, so I also know she's all raw as well, so yeah. This is a four-horned reindeer we're looking at. But yeah, enough gawking. Let's speak with um. Yo, Buck! I was considering sending out a search party for you, too. Is everything alright? Yes, it is. Here you go there, Arm. Um. Just what you were looking for. Unless I'm very much mistaken, these look remarkably like a conductor's wand and some sort of smocks. Uh, this may seem like an old question, but why are you giving these to me? Did I forget to tell you? Not to worry. All will become clear once you've changed into your surplus and are ready to rehearse. Yeah, there's my center and the homunculi. Yeah, allow us to elaborate a little more. Rehearse? But I don't remember her queen to sing, and I'm fairly certain you never even asked me. Well, we are now. Sorry, dear. Change your plans. To be honest, knowing how committed you are to the Starlight Celebration, it never occurred to me that you might be opposed to the idea. Well, we cannot disappoint the little ones. I suppose it is only me that I at least try. Very well. I'll do it. If it makes you feel any better, I'll be singing too. 
Bear in mind that I lack your experience when it comes to entertaining the masses, so if there's anyone who should be nervous, it's me. Besides, there's no time for dilly-dallying. We still have to find a man with a voice deep and cavernous as the bowels of the earth. Maybe we find how we're looking for? Yeah, we've seen this guy in 2015, as well as last year, tending to the big Christmas fairs. Banefeld. Are these the musicians? We better start checking the upper theaters. What did you call them? Accused sticks? No, that don't sound right. Yeah, all of a sudden, out of nowhere. Yeah, a big burly Rogadin. You there! Are you one of the Starlight Serpents? Yeah, that's right. Oi, and a member of the Adventurers Guild besides. Every year they give me leave to help out with the festival. Remarkable! His word reverberates to the core of my soul. Deep and cavernous as the bowels of the earth? Why, he's Titan incarnate! My thoughts exactly. Who could have guessed that the perfect candidate was under our noses? Figuratively speaking, of course, this whole time. How would you like to join our choir? Yeah, he's got to think about it. I don't see why not. When it comes to being big and loud, no one does it better than me. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. Well, I would normally balk at sharing my stage with rank amateurs, I am willing to make an exception. Obviously, none of you can even hope to reach my standards, but with sufficient practice, we should be able to approach adequate or even not displeasing. Ouch. As for Oskelet and Osolfo, I have something else in mind. While you may not be serenading us with your angelic vocals, you will instead be blessing the children with their presents I've prepared. Yeah, leave it to them. <laughs> I will make sure they keep their hands off of the children's mummies, no matter how yummy they might be. If the homing killer can limit their flirtations to a well-toned wink here and a cheeky smile there, we'll have them eating out of our hands without any lasting repercussions. Um, I have a question. Who's this conductor stick for? Yeah, who's gonna run this show? And then... Yeah, all faces torn towards my blushing bride. You catch on quickly, don't you? I'm not asking you to do this entirely from the goodness of your heart. I will see to it you that you are properly remunerated. In some form. Yeah, very well. <laughs> She'll take the stage to lead the show. I would say compared to the four members of the choir, you have the easy job. Judging from what I've seen at other concerts, you just need to look the part and wave the baton a bit. Simple. Rather well, you than me, friend. I wouldn't know where to start. I'm much more comfortable bellowing away to my heart's content. Anyway, let me know when you're ready for some conducting. And so with that, we'll complete our first of these quests for Starlight Celebration by taking 3,360 experience and 1,248 gil. And so yeah. That's the first part done. Yeah, Bainfeld and the Homunculi, as well as my sense, I guess I'm also need to practice a wee bit. So yeah, that's what's um, now that Ama's changed clothes. This is what she's going to be wearing, and everyone else that's in the choir will be wearing something similar as well. So let's go over here because Bainfeld's also dressed in it now. So this, as you'll notice, is a recurring quest, and this one is a little unique. You'll find out what I'm talking about as we take it on, this level 15 challenge entitled, A Concerted Effort. Bainfield is keen to put his booming voice to good use. Ready for a bit of singing? Oh, if you're wondering where my center's going, she's keeping an eye on her stall. She'll be right back when it's time to get started, though. You'll think she'll have enough on her plate already, what with all the buying and selling. Good of all to find the time and guild to help us slot with the festival. Her voice ain't half one neither. It's hard to believe she wants someone to be like me to be in a choir. I don't know the first thing about music. Best time I can always just few sh sea shanties, and that's only when I'm in me cops. Might as well make the most of it, I suppose. And if we're enjoying ourselves, the young ones will too. As long as they stick around long enough to get our presents, we can consider it a success. And how about you? 
Had a chance to practice your wand waving. If not, well, it's a bit late to start now, but I'm surely I'll pick it up as we go along. It looks like we've already got a few people lined up to watch the show. You can see the Starlight Celebrants herding them together just over yonder. I'd watch out for that enthusiastic looking lass over there though. She's been telling folk about the most lordless musicians the realm has ever known and they seem to be lapping it up. I'd appreciate her drumming up a crowd like that, but I think the expectations might be a bit too high. What with this being our first performance? Might be an idea to start with the other lot. They seem less to take offense, less like to take offense to a flat note or two. Also feeling confident we can take a crack at something trickier, but you're the conductor so you get final say as what we sing and when. Well, there's no time like the present. Let one of the Starlight Celebrants know when you're ready to begin. So, yeah, quest difficulty and rewards will vary according to which Starlight Celebrant you approach. So yeah, this is where it gets interesting. You have two options. The Saturn 9 Starlight Celebrants on the left, and the... Yeah, hard to get around the text. The Splendiferous Starlight Celebrants on the right. Now, if we go to the Saturnine Celebrants, we'll do a challenge conducting the choir that will be easier, and we'll get two of the tokens needed for collecting rewards. While on the other side, if we go with the Splendiferous, it'll be harder, and but we'll get the chance to get three tokens. So, since this is two completely different challenges with conducting the choir, we're going to show off both versions. So, let's go ahead and speak with the Saturnine Starlight Celebrant first. Finished your preparations. That's good. I've been struggling to keep the younglings amused while they wait. I had, then I told them that only the most well-behaved child would receive the present, and they soon settled down. Anyway, it's about time we got started. This way, please. So, now we can... Gets two certificates of good cheer for successful completion of this piece. To attempt the Capriccio, speak with the, the Splendiferous Starlight Celebrant. So yeah, we wish to begin. Now here's how it goes. We're given two prompts. If you're familiar with Dance Dance Revolution, this is basically Sing Sing Revolution, as it were. So yeah, you have to time your inputs with the in-screen prompts. When you see blue, you just have to press the button once. If you see the yellow prompt appear on screen, you basically have to rapid tap the button. So yeah, that basically just shows you again what that goes. And the closer you get it to, top for, to the diamond timing in the middle, the better. So yeah, you can use any button to play this, so we'll stick with X. To access the pause menu or escape key, from which you may choose to end the performance. But we don't want to. But yeah, if you fail an on-screen prompt, you incur a penalty. And when a certain number have incurred, the performance will not end immediately, but your attempt will be unsuccessful. So yeah, so for, suffice it to say, I had to try this a few times, both sides, in order to get this right. And so now, let's begin. And so, later that night... Tanya and the choir take the stage, and it's time for us to begin our little Sing Sing Revolution. Alright choir, whenever you're ready, let us begin. And so there we go, that's the first version. Yeah, 
Yeah, I was I was always nervous on the thing getting a little too close. But yeah, we can before we can show off the other part, we do need to speak with Bainfeld to accept the reward. Phew, the thing is looking harder than it looks. Good thing you had us we had you to keep us in time. Of course, we'll be putting on more shows all the way to the end of the Starlight Celebration. I think we'll be able to put on a fairly convincing performance here with an autoconductor. But if you've got time to spare, why not join us for another sing song? Oh, and one other thing. I think Uncle Ranji wanted to say something to you. Probably wants to thank you so much. So, we'll take the two tokens, the two certificates of good cheer. And then we'll do this again, before we speak with Um. Now we'll go over to the other side. Speak with a Splendiferous Celebrant. Yeah. Hark! The conductor beyond compare makes a grand entrance. The crowd can barely contain their excitement. Are your preparations complete, Maestro? Yes, they are. Now for the other version of the song. Yeah, had a bit of a slip up out there in the middle, but still, yeah, the, you saw that the notes were moving faster in that round. Which is why it's the harder version. Yeah, it's, but do you know what really um, caught me off guard was I was so uh, much of in a hurry in some instances to try and make sure I could keep the tapping going, because... Yeah, th there were a couple of times when I didn't get my timing right when I was testing, but yeah, as you saw, quite a bit of a ch more challenging there. But it's worth it to get the three extra, the extra token if you want it. So there's both versions of the song, and now that that's taken care of, it's time to continue on because we do have another quest to take care of. Yeah, even though we've been conducting the choir, and even though this guy's axe is freaking huge and takes up half the screen, we still need to speak with Arm to complete the last challenge here. And whatever this is pronounced like Theatgerth Danium, I have no idea. It sounds Gaelic or Welsh to me, but that is a freaking weird word and I have no idea how to pronounce it. Uh, my apologies for butchering it, but I, I don't know who came up with it. And anyway. Am Garanji is beaming with delight following the resounding success of the concerts. That was incredible! Considering that only Augusta now has any real experience, it's hard to believe we were able to keep up with him. Of course, your conducting is what made it all possible. We would have been lost without you! As planned, Oscar Lay and Osso Fo are handing out the presents. It truly is a marvel to see so many children arriving to collect gifts, but I do wish that Human Kilai would pay more attention to the younglings and a little less to their mothers. Still, they are doing as ever such a good job. Yeah, my sense of warning is about that. What? No more presents? Yeah, over where the or where the homunculi are. I'm dreadfully sorry, little ones. Unfortunately, the Saint of Nemea has not blessed us with quite the right number of gifts. We would have never expected the call performance to be so popular. Had we known, we would have prayed for a few more parcels. Oh no, whatever shall we do? There must be something we can give them. Yeah, what are we gonna do? But then, 
the saint knows I've been barred. That's why I can't offer presents. You know, apparently this girl's feeling down on her luck. And just as a familiar face walks by, Hey there, Godbert, dressed as the Saint Onomia, still lacking the required pants to do your job properly. Ho ho ho, fear not all you faithful. The Saint Onomia has heard your prayers. Rejoice, for I am come bearing gifts. Hawk and one, hawk and all, for a bevy of festive treats awaits every good boy and girl, all courtesy of Manda, <coughs> uh, my little helpers. Now, who has been good this year? Me, me, I've bothered all my bestest behavior. Yeah, let's go and see what's going on. What a wonderful surprise. Your arrival is timely indeed. <laughs> Think nothing of it. The Saint Anomia lives only to bring joy to the realm. But did I perchance see a young girl with tears in her eyes? Verily, my work here cannot be considered complete until that sweet child is smiling once more. Yes, I could not agree more. She was beside herself when she heard there was no present for her. I think she blames herself for some reason. We must find her without delay, though I get the impression that the sight of a member of the festival staff would be rather upsetting for her, at least until she has had a chance to calm down. Tonya, could you ask if anyone has seen her? I believe I can do that for you. Thank you. She can't have gone far, but keep your eyes peeled. Gradania is full of little nooks and crannies, perfect for hiding. And with that, I must depart, for I still have many parcels to deliver, and so little time. May the blessings of Namiya be upon each and every one of you. Ho ho ho! And so away goes Godbert. Will we ever see him in a full, fully properly decked out outfit? Yeah, that's still so creepy. So yeah, we are questing for this round. We have to speak with various people, so we start with the bard, Simpkin. A crying girl? Well, yes, one went in running in the direction of Nugredonia. Though for the life of me, I could have sworn that there were tears of joy, presumably brought on by your magnificent display at the amphitheater. Had I known the truth of the matter, mayhap I could have offered a gentle melody of mine own to ease whatever ails her troubled heart. I sincerely hope you find her, my fellow musician. Yeah, we gotta go to the other side of town. Specifically, the amphitheater, or not the amphitheater, the Aetheroi Plaza. And of course, since it's the start of the celebrate Starlight Celebration, it's a busy day here in Gridania as evening has arrived in the city. Yeah, it's not often we see two wood whalers standing here. There's usually just the one chilling out, but we can talk with this guy. Sorry, I can't say I'm paying much attention to bowling babes. Got enough of my own at home. Might be worth asking around the otter's nest, though. Always a lot of folk coming and going. Mayhap one of them saw a sauce. Maybe one of them saw something. Yeah. Oh, we meet again. In fact, it's uh, we meet again quite a few times with all these new people. Hello oh, there, Gavin of the Twin Adder. Well, yes, I saw a girl matching your description darting off in the direction of the Acorn Orchard. But since the area is frequented by a large number of young children, I didn't think anything of it. It appeared to me that she was unaccompanied, though. Yeah, that's true, she was. So yeah, we gotta go to where the Acorn Orchard is. Yeah, you only ever really come to the Acorn Orchard once, and that's if you start your game in Gridania, and you come over here to help out little Annalie here to cheer her up, because there's a quest that Nicolio gives you that encourages you to do just that. But it's not Annalie that we're trying to cheer up, it is actually this impulsive girl who went off crying right over here. Yeah, a few people have been trying to cheer up, but no luck. Let's see if we can try our luck. Yeah. Hello there, young lady. Oh, I 
know you. You're the stick wavy lady from the concert. Are you cross with me? Not at all. Oh, good. But that's why I got no present. Because I was naughty. It's just me and Daddy. He's a wood whaler, but he's always busy. He only comes at home at night when I'm asleep. But today he wasn't busy, so we went to the market. I said I wanted a flower hairpin. But he said next time. When is next time? Maybe there is no next time. He's always too busy. So I said I hate you and then I ran away. That's when I saw the concert. I wanted to hear the music so I went there by myself. But then I didn't get a present. It's because I said I hate you to daddy and ran off. It's not your fault, child. I am to blame. Yeah, who goes there? Oh, hey, my Santa. It's you. I know you two. You're a singer. You're like, no, you must think of me for someone else. <laughs> not quite. Think of me as one of the saint's little helpers. He is not the only one who gives presents. I bought one too, just for you. Now hold still and close your eyes. And so... That is quite the hairpin. Yeah, three flowers on one hairpin? How'd you pull it off? Oh, the hairpin! Just what I've always wanted! But how did you know? Well, a certain someone gave this to me to look after. He told me that you had been standing in front of Black Rabbit Traders staring at it every day. That somebody also asked me to hold on to it as a present for the Starlight Celebration. Which is why when you asked him to buy for you, he said next time. He didn't want you to know that he had already bought it. So that means... Yes, that's right. Now why don't you run along and find him? Thank you, Saint's Little Helper. Thank you, Stick Wavy Lady. I promise I'll say sorry to Daddy. Yeah, wear those fr flowers proudly, young lady. <sighs> Whoever thought doing good deeds could be so tiring? <laughs> yeah, not exactly the best way to put it, eh? You should have seen the way she was milling about near my stall day after day staring at my floor hairpins. And the way she had been talking with one of the wood whalers with that pleading look in her eyes. I suspected I'd found a customer. Sure enough, he came over one day and asked which of my wares the girl had been looking at. He bought it and requested that I keep it safe until the Starlight Celebration. No doubt to hide it from his daughter. Imagine my surprise when he came by, asking not after the hairpin, but his little girl. He had been desperately searching for her after she ran off. I couldn't very well leave him to search for her on his own, certainly not on a day such as this. I am one of the saint's little helpers after all. <laughs> yeah, why are we giving her that look? Yes, you heard me correctly. Is it so surprising that I could get into the festive spirit? Besides, if I treat them with kindness now, her father may be inclined to buy her more presents in the future. Why, she might become a paying customer herself when she has money of her own to spend. That is the key to good business. Plant the seeds and watch them grow. And to be honest, I underestimated how many presents we would need for the concert. It's a good thing I had the hairpin from her father to hand. Good thing. Of course, I have you to thank for tracking her down. You're an awful lot easier to find than a wayward child. Come to think of it, Angranji would be relieved to hear that this little incident has come to a satisfactory conclusion. Would you be so kind as to put her mind at ease? I, on the other hand, have a rather more pressing engagement. I simply must change out of this unflattering costume. Although I suspect I may have to wear it again before the festival comes to a close. Well then, ta ta for now! Alright, so now we can make our way back over to Miketo. 
and bring the questing for this year's Starlight Celebration to a close. I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks when the first word came out on what would happen for this year's Starlight Celebration. Like, I was over the moon for this. I was really looking forward to this year's event, and I can tell you with absolute certainty that everything we've gotten to do has been certainly meeting and going beyond my expectations. I was really looking forward to getting this choir experience because I love singing during Christmas, and of course, I've enjoyed singing um, in various Let's Plays on this channel. So, to know that we got to do uh, opportunity to conduct a choir definitely made this all worth it. So, let's speak with Om to complete this challenge. So, did you find her? Yes, we did. My, my, my center. She never ceases to amaze me. I suppose she can add cheering up crying children to her lengthy list of talents. And you seem to have quite the knack for finding missing persons. I dare say that comes in handy from time to time. Anyway, I hope we will be spared any similar misadventures for the rest of the festival. This is supposed to be a happy occasion after all. If it gives even one youngling reason to be upset, it will have been all for naught. But now that that's over, we can all go back to enjoying the Starlight Celebration. I know you've already done more than enough to help us, but if you fancy leading the choir again, the Starlight Celebrants and I would be absolutely thrilled. We are still inundated with visitors from far and wide, all clamoring for a chance to experience an authentic, yet unique, Ishgari music spectacle and receive a gift from the saints. And here is one for you. Thank you there, Arm. While I suspect that the presents may be somewhat more enticing than our singing, I can say with a, sh a shadow of a doubt that the whole enterprise has been a roaring success. And so can I. So, we'll not only take our 3,360 experience points, but we also get to dress up with the choir outfit that we just had Om um, and everyone else participating in the event wearing. So, that brings the quest to an end. Of course, I've got to show Tanya off wearing this new look. Yeah, there we go. Put the hat on. I add this on to my list of things for her to wear. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah. She now gets to sing her heart out as well. And, okay, I was not expecting a ghost on this Starlight Celebration. What gives? Yeah, I think we may need to go chill out elsewhere and just stand here proudly in front of the Miketo Zampa Theater knowing that we've probably done what will unquestionably be my all-time favorite seasonal event that I've ever done here in Final Fantasy XIV. And to bring you guys the opportunity to share the game for this year has certainly been really wonderful as I've added more streams into my repertoire, not just on YouTube, but also on Twitch. And also, on top of all that, especially here today, getting to introduce you to literally the girl of my dreams. And I have no doubt in my mind that um, Tanya will definitely get some more face time as time goes on. It was my honor to introduce you to her, and I have no question that she will definitely be in my heart and in my mind for a very long time, because I, c I can definitely say her being in my life was by far the greatest gift of all in 2018. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this special bonus video of Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV Heaven's Ward. Of course, I will see you guys after I come back from Christmas vacation. Um, when I do come back, of course, we will continue to be streaming on YouTube and Twitch. Um, I might even stream later this afternoon. We'll see how it goes. And then tomorrow I'm off for Christmas vacation for about a week or so. So you'll have to do without me until then. But I'll look forward to sharing this wonderful video with you and this... Wonderful experience here in Final Fantasy XIV as we continue on heading towards the new expansion starting next year. So, thank you very much everyone for watching, and until next time everyone, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and until next time, this is Matthew at Novora Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.